human body. It's incredibly fragile, yet astonishingly resilient. But sometimes it needs help from trained physicians or compassionate strangers. Jack Roush, Ben Young, and Travis Pastrana endured traumatic injury and intensive surgery. Each man came close to death, but beat the odds and made a miraculous recovery. Their stories demonstrate the remarkable restorative powers our bodies possess and the strange turn of events that cause accidents and that help us survive them. Danger is a part of life and it can turn our lives upside down at any moment. Race car owner Jack Roush is a legend in the world of NASCAR. But a freak plane accident left him drowning in the bottom of a lake and in desperate need of a miracle. Roush loves speed, and the NASCAR team owner has turned his passion into a thriving business. But he also has a second love. When he's not at the track, he's up in the air, flying vintage planes. But on April 19, 2002, this born winner almost lost it all. As a 60th birthday gift, Roush got a chance to fly a friend's ultralight aircraft. He wanted to test the aircraft's capabilities, so he tried some low-level aerobatics at a nearby lake. The location was new to him, and he had no way of knowing that a deadly hazard waited ahead. 52-year-old game warden Larry Hicks lived on the lake with his wife, Donna. And my wife and I were having a discussion about what we should do that evening, uh, whether or not we should go to a movie or just spend a quiet night at home. This simple decision would change their lives forever. As Roush headed toward the lake, that small decision was the first of an astonishing set of circumstances that unfolded over the next seven agonizing minutes. They watched in horror as Jack's plane flipped upside down and fell eight stories into the lake. Jack was fortunate to land in water but in the bed of this particular lake stood a minefield of jagged tree stumps. Each could easily crush and shatter the ultralight and its pilot in an instant. And I yelled at my wife, called 911. I'm gonna run down to the lake and see what I can do for the pilot, whoever he is. At that time, I didn't know. They just had an ultralight plane crash into the lake. A plane crash into the lake? An ultralight ran into some power lines and it is turned over. It's upside down in the lake. By a stroke of luck, Larry's brother had left a small motorized boat just two days earlier. Larry jumped in and rushed to the wreckage. Larry, be careful! My husband's a game warden. He's going in after the person that was in the plane. When I first got to the plane, right before I, I got to the plane, I realized that I was in aviation gas and started smelling the gas. And that's when I, I turned around and told Donna, I said, no matter what happens, I love you. I love you. I think we both realized that anything could happen at that point. The little boat helped him get to the wreck faster. But had the crash happened just six weeks earlier, Larry would have been too sick to even attempt a rescue. Larry has been battling cancer for almost two decades. And just 18 months before the crash, he was given only two months to live. Severely weakened and barely able to move, he had just begun treatments. They would turn out to save not just his life, but also the life of a total stranger. With my cancer, that 70% of the people get it back in the first two years. I had a doctor in Montgomery that had diagnosed the testosterone level was almost completely zero and they started shots to help boost that up. Energy level had came up, our strength levels had just come up. It enabled us to jump in and, and help Mr. Ralph. The damaged smoking craft leaked an explosive film of gasoline over the water. The closer I got to the water, the more I smelled the fuel. I worried that he or the pilot might not make it because it was pretty scary. But Larry wouldn't give up not as long as he thought the pilot might still be alive. To me, I was safer in the water than I was on the surface. And plus, the pilot was still on the plane, and that's the thing that was primary focus. I really wasn't thinking about anything other than getting the pilot out. Working by touch in the murky water, Larry came up empty. But miraculously, the plane had somehow missed all the tree stumps, resting more or less intact on the lake bottom. Nearing exhaustion, Larry took another breath and dove back down to search some more. 
I just about ran out of air and started to push off the bottom, and I, I located the back of Jack's neck with my hand. Larry didn't know if the pilot was alive or dead, but he did know that no one could survive for long at the bottom of that lake. As his own lungs screamed for oxygen, Larry had to return to the surface without the pilot. Larry Hicks had made two desperate attempts to pull Jack Roush from his aircraft. Roush had already been trapped underwater for several minutes when Larry made his third attempt. I went up and took a deep breath and came back down the third time. And when I traced the seatbelt down to his lap, I recognized the feel of it as the same type of seatbelt that I had had training in the, in the military. So I triggered the release and Jack floated right up into my arms. And at that point, I pushed off the bottom of the lake and broke the surface and started hanging onto the wing of the airplane. Uh, but the thing that was really apparent to me was he was not breathing. He had already drowned. So we started CPR on Jack. And I, I remember about the second or third breath asking God not to take this man. And on the fifth breath, he started breathing. Uh, he never, never gained consciousness. By the time Larry got the victim out of the wreckage, the paramedics had arrived. Exposure to the caustic aviation fuel chemically burned Larry's skin, but he hardly noticed. He used his remaining strength to help the paramedics get Jack out of the water. Roush lay broken and unconscious, but thanks to Larry Hicks, he was alive. But as soon as we, we got to the shore and tried to walk up on the bank, it was then I realized I didn't have any energy, and I literally crawled up on the bank because <laughs> I, I couldn't walk. A week after the crash, he grew strong enough to meet the man who had saved his life. It was the first time that I'd been uh, out of the bed uh, and in a chair, uh, and uh, and I he looked at me and and I looked at him, and, and neither one of us could talk for five minutes. You know, I, I, at 60 years old, I spend a lot of time trying to see things from other people's perspective, and I had already put myself in his place, and uh, you know, I had questioned whether that I would have had the courage and the stamina to go do what he did, and, uh, and it, it had humbled me. Jack made an aggressive recovery, and less than two months after the crash, he returned to the races at Dover, where he thanked Larry Hicks before 140,000 adoring NASCAR fans. When, when Larry jumped in the water, he didn't jump in to save a, a child you know, uh, of his own. He didn't jump in to save a family member to help somebody he knew or somebody that was in the military. He went out there just to see if he could help another human being, and that's pretty special. Tragedy can strike in an instant, but recovery requires an extraordinary symphony of circumstances. Medical science, the injured body, and sheer astonishing luck must work together to defy the devastating odds.